Hello fellow photographers, Dan from Mod one here, back with another sneak peek showing you new features in the upcoming Photo Raw 2025. Today I want to show you the new Match Color Filter. This is a filter that lives inside of the Effects tab, and its job is to take the color and tone from one photo and apply it to another. I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can use this. First off, let me show you how to get started. First, open a photo into Edit, then go to the Effects tab and click on Add Filter. And in here you'll see the new Match Color Filter. I'm just going to select that to get it going. Now again, what Match Color does is it wants to take the color and tone from a reference and apply it to your photo. Now we include some common classical paintings to get you started with, but to really see how to use this, you're going to want to use your own photo or other photos to help you uh, get the right color and tone. But let me just show you a few examples of what we can do here. So just using some of these built-in styles using classic works of art, you can see how it's adapting the photo to be the same color palette and the same tonal range, the same tonal values as those different pieces of classical art. All right, that's cool, but let me show you how I would use it. So I've got this photo of Johnny, and I've always wanted to do kind of a Game of Thrones look for it. When you look at modern TV, you look at modern film, there's a technique called color grading that's used where they significantly alter it from what you would see out of the camera. What I'm going to do is show you how you can use the match color filter to take that look, that color grading look from a film or a movie and apply it to your photo. You'll want to go to Google. You'll want to search for the film or movie that you're interested in and download a screenshot or the poster from that movie. And then we're going to load it using match color. So here in the reference combo box, I can click and I can select load file. Then I'm just going to select that file that I downloaded and press open. And voila, magic. It's taken the color and tone from this Game of Thrones still and applied it to my photo. I can adjust how it looks using the sliders below. The color slider controls how much of the color adjustment is applied. And I can tune that to taste and same with luminosity, how much of the luminosity mapping from the photo is going to be applied. And there's also a contrast and a saturation control that you can use to fine tune it. Maybe you want a little bit less contrast and a little bit or a little more contrast, a little less saturation. There we go. Something like that. So that's another great way to use match color. But let me show you a third way. The third thing you want to do is when you're creating a composite, you're blending multiple photos together and you want to take the color and tone from one layer in your photo to apply it to another so that it looks more natural, so it blends in better. Let me show you how to do that. In this case, I have this fall walking away scene and I want to put a couple walking away from the camera, kind of like a uh, engagement shot, for example. Now, in order for me to do that, let's find a picture of the couple that we want to use. I happen to have it down here in my film strip. I'm just going to click and drag to add that photo as a new layer on top of it. There it is. Now you can see these two layers have wildly different colors and tone. One's shot in the fall, it's very red, it's very kind of muted in terms of its color. This one's shot on the beach, it's very bright, very sunny. If I just take the couple and put them in there, it's not going to look very real. Let me show you. Let's grab the transform tool to start, and I need to just scale these guys down to fit my scene a little bit better. I'm holding down the shift key while I move it around so that I maintain the proportions the way that I like. All right, next I'm going to grab the masking tool to paint them out. The easiest way to do that is going to be with the Quick Mask AI brush. All I do is just tap on the areas that I want to mask. I want to mask her, I want to mask him, his shirt, make sure I get all the little bits and pieces of them so that they're all in there. And I want to make sure my mode is set to paint, which it is. So I'm going to paint, that means I'm going to keep the blue stuff, and I'm going to get rid of everything else. And I'll hit the OK button. There we go. Bam. So it's masked them out and put them into the scene, but it doesn't look very believable yet. Part of that is because there's no shadow. I'll show you how to put a shadow in, but part of it is also because the color and tone look different. You know, these look very sunny and very orange compared to the more red looking scene. So here's where we'll use match color. Go to the effects, go to filters, add match color. And in that save reference combo box, you can pick other layers within a layered file. I'm going to pick the background layer. That's the layer name for the trees. And there you go. It's taken the color and tone from the foreground. Now I need to adjust it a little bit because there's very deep shadows on this one. So I'm just going to bring my luminosity control back a little bit. The color's probably a little too strong too. So I'll adjust the color and tone to fit better. I think I'm going to bring the contrast down and the saturation down a little bit too. There we go. Let me turn that on and off so you can see the difference. Before and after. 
It's a subtle difference, but it really helps them blend in better with my scene. Now, next thing we want to do is we need to add a quick shadow under them to make it look a little bit more believable. So to do that, I want to add the shadow to the background layer in this case, because there's a mask on the upper layer. And if I paint on it, you're not going to be able to see it. We'll go to the bottom layer. We'll go to local adjustments. I'm going to add an adjustment. I'm going to use the paint with color option, and I'm just going to set black as my color. I want to make sure I'm using my brush with the biggest feather and a low opacity that I can. And I'm going to look at my scene and kind of try to figure out what the light is doing. So if you look, there's actually shadows coming in from both sides. It's a very overcast day. So we've got shadows coming across from the trees going in both directions. So we're actually going to create a shadow under their feet. That's kind of that long skinny shadow, just like we're seeing in the rest of the scene. So starting with under his feet, keep in mind, I'm painting under his feet because he's on the layer above. I'll just draw a line to the left. And I'm just going to do that a few times until I start to get what looks like a normal shadow length. And I'll do the same thing with her feet too. We'll go out just a little bit. So we add just a touch of a shadow underneath their feet. That helps a lot in terms of making it look more believable. All right, two more things. First off, it looks a little crooked. Let's fix that. I'm going to grab the crop tool. I'll just use the leveling option. I'm going to drag across something that I think is more level in my photo. There we go, that helps. And I think the last thing is this reflector on this tree kind of drives me nuts over here. So I'm gonna use the new generative erase tool to remove that. It's great for getting rid of things like this where it's within a line. Using other traditional tools, it's gonna be really hard for me to maintain the edge of the tree. This is gonna do a great job of keeping the tree in place. Bonk, there we go. All right, so there you go. I've shown you a couple different ways to use the match color filter. I've shown you how to use it just in a creative sense. I've shown you how to use the color and tone from films and movies and how to apply the color and tone from one layer to another within your composites. There you go. Hope that was fun. Have a great day.